Brothers and sisters in Islam, have you ever had that feeling that you made a wrong turn somewhere? Physically, like you actually made a turn and you felt like that wasn't the turn that you were supposed to make. You're in the wrong place. And in order to feel safe and secure, you actually need to turn around, to not keep going down that path. But in order to turn around, you have to feel like you know where you're going. In other words, there has to be a place that you turn to, a refuge, a place of safety and security. Allah Azza wa Jal invites us to that place of safety and security. Wallahu yad'u ila dar al salam wa yahdi man yasha'u ila sirat al mustaqim. Allah calls to dar al salam, to the house of peace. And He guides whom He wills to a straight path. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invites us constantly throughout the Quran to turn to him, to turn to him, to turn away from other than him and to turn to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. He puts that in our hearts and if we respond to that, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts that from us. Wallahu yuridu an yatuba alaykum wa yuridu alladheena yattabi'oona ash-shahawati an tamilu maylan azima Allah wants to and he says yatubu alaykum it doesn't mean that Allah repents to you it means that Allah wants to turn to you and those who follow their desires want you to go astray they want you to deviate greatly from the path and from here we learn that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is at tawwab One of the beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is at tawwab often translated as the one who accepts repentance or who grants repentance or the ever relenting subhanahu wa ta'ala. But translations, honestly, they don't do this name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala justice. It doesn't allow us to fully understand what it means that Allah is at tawab. And before going any further, brothers and sisters in Islam, recognize that there's no knowledge that is better than knowing who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. And this is why he has emphasized that in the Quran. If someone had called us right now and they said, you got an opportunity in front of you, I guarantee you, all you have to do is put up $10 and we'll turn it into $10 million. Many people wouldn't be here at Juma. They'd be trying to get that knowledge of how to turn the 10 into 10 million. This knowledge, the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is nothing greater than that. It defines our relationship as slaves of Allah with our master. And it defines our purpose in life and how we move in this life. Knowing who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. So Allah Azza wa Jal tells us that he is at tawab. That comes from the root ta wa ba which means to return. Which means to return. When we talk about this in light of the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then there's two broad meanings. And the first is the one that many of us fail to understand. And that is that Allah Azza wa Jal constantly, repetitively turns to his slaves. He turns to his slaves. That means that he facilitates the means in you for tawbah. That feeling of remorse that you get when you do something wrong, that's from a tawab. When you do something wrong and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts someone in your life that says, look, I don't think that's the right way to go about that. That's from a tawab. 
Maybe you've done something that you shouldn't have done. Or you left off something that you should be doing. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes some hardship for you to remind you to get back on the right path. That's a tawab, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah azza wa jal is putting in us by turning to us through his mercy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us that that door is open. No matter how much, no matter how far you've gone, that you can still turn. It doesn't matter how far away you are. That's not the, that's not the question. The question is, will you turn around and come back? If it takes you a year, if it takes you two years, less or more, are you willing to turn back? Allah's at tawab He puts that in us, that feeling of Remorse. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, time and time again, instructs us in the Quran to turn to Him. Watubu ilallah. Turn to Allah. And oftentimes, oftentimes, brothers and sisters, it's important to understand this concept because we usually think of Toba as repentance. It's normally how it's translated. And we think of repentance as just saying, I'm sorry. Like, how do you repent to a person that you've done something wrong to? You say, I'm sorry. But, but repentance is a lot more than that. Repentance is reconciliation. It's to make things right. That is actually what it means to do tawbah, is that you make things right. That may be between you and the creator. That may be between you and the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you have to make things right. And when Allah Azza wa Jal opens up that door for us, every single one of us needs it. There's nobody that is free from Tawbah. Nobody that doesn't need to make Tawbah. Yes, alhamdulillah, there are many Muslims who are not out there committing major sins. But slip ups? Absolutely. There are things that we could be doing better? Absolutely. The Prophet والسلام, none of us have recorded, there's no recorded sins that the Prophet has done. But yet he would seek Allah forgiveness and repent, turn to Allah more than a hundred times in a sitting. So all of us, all of us are in need of Tawbah and Allah at Tawab puts that in our hearts. The second meaning, and this is the meaning that many of us may be familiar with, is that Allah accepts us when we turn to him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his magnificence still accepts us slaves when we turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And here's a story that all of us know but maybe have not contemplated in light of the meaning of Allah's name at Tawab. All of us are familiar with the story of the father and mother of humankind, Adam and Eve, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed in Jannah for them to enjoy everything except for one tree that they were forbidden from. And shaitan whispered to them, and they ate from that tree. And what happened after they ate from the tree? Notice, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired in them to feel remorse because they did something wrong. And not only inspired in them that remorse, but taught Adam how to repent. And so Allah, Allah accepted those words from Adam. What words? They are explained in Surah Al-A'raf. Rabbana zalamna anfusana. O our Lord, we have wronged ourselves. Wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna nanakunanna min al-khasirin. And if you don't forgive us and have mercy on us, then we, we will be from the losers. Where did Adam get that from? Where did Eve get those words from? They got them from Allah at Tawab. 
out of his rahmah, because Allah is at tawab ar-Rahim, out of his rahmah, out of his mercy, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instilled in them that remorse, then taught them how to make tawbah, and then accepted that tawbah from them. This is a tawab, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And notice this name of Allah Azza wa Jalla comes in the Quran 11 times. Nine of those 11 times, it is paired with Allah's name, Ar-Rahim. So that we know that Allah Azza wa Jalla doesn't just turn to us, but that he's merciful to us. That if we turn back to him, it won't be like when we go back to somebody that we've done wrong and they still hold a grudge and they still have it inside of them. Forgive but not forget. It's not like that. Allah Azza wa Jalla is at Tawab. If you turn to him, he is also Rahim. He's merciful, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He doesn't deal with you like the creation deals with you. Wallahi, we get annoyed. Somebody keeps doing something wrong to you. Once, twice, three times, khalas, three strikes and you're out. That's how we are as human beings. We don't just keep giving a person a chance over and over and over again. But we don't want to be seen as being gullible and naive and, and suckers at the end of the day. Oh, we're not, we're not going to let that go down. Once, twice, three, okay, that's enough. Allah is is at Tawab over and over and over again, accepting our repentance, subhanahu wa ta'ala, turning to us. Helping us to see that we need to turn to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah is at Tawab al-Rahim. One time in the Quran, when Allah Azza wa Jal mentions his name at Tawab, he also mentions his name Hakim, Al Hakim, the wise. Walawla Fadlullahi alaykum wa rahmatuhu wa anna Allah tawabun hakim. And if it was not for Allah, his, his virtue, his mercy for you. وَلَوْلَا فَضْلُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَتُهُ The grace and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Had it not been for that, and the fact that he is tawabun hakim, that he is a tawab and he is the all-wise, you would have been destroyed, you would have suffered much. What we get from this, brothers and sisters in Islam, is a very important lesson. And that is that just because you turn to a tawab it doesn't mean that things are going to get immediately easier. Allah, out of his wisdom, may test you with difficulty even after you turn to him because it is that difficulty that is going to make you a better person. It's going to make you more virtuous. And you come out on the other side of that difficulty a better person. And maybe Allah knows that you can't handle that test. And so from his hikmah, from his wisdom, when you turn to him, things get immediately easier. And Allah is al-Hakim and he knows best, subhanahu wa ta'ala, how to accept the tawbah of his servants. Allah Azza wa Jal doesn't just encourage us or command us to turn to him in repentance. But he also lets us know that he loves the people who repent. Allah loves those who constantly return to him, seeking his repentance, and he loves the mutatahirin, those who purify themselves. And Tawbah is in fact a means of purification. It's a means of purifying your soul. It's a means of cleaning your slate. And that is something that each and every single one of us has to do. And the Prophet ﷺ gave us the example of a man who goes out into the desert and with his, he's with his camel and it's just him and his camel. And everything that he needs is with the camel. 
his water, his provisions, everything he needs for that trip. And he goes to sleep. And when he wakes up, that camel is not there. There's nothing left for him but death. He's stuck in the middle of the desert. There's nobody coming out there. And there's no triple A to call or anything like that. There's nothing. That's it. He's done. From that emotion that overcomes him, he gets extremely tired. And he goes back to sleep, waiting for death. When he wakes up, that camel is there. He went from being sure that he was going to die to now having a chance at life again. And he is ecstatic, not just happy, but ecstatic, to the point that he says, Allahumma anta abdi wa ana rabbuk. Oh Allah, you are my slave and I am your Lord. He just made a mistake because of how happy he was. The Prophet said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more delighted, is happier with the tawbah of one of you than that one is when he lost his camel. Allah is happy for us when we turn to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters in Islam, wallahi, each and every one of us knows in ourselves that we're struggling with something. Don't think that you're not. Don't think that because you pray your five a day and you fast in Ramadan, and maybe you fast on Mondays and Thursdays, maybe more, maybe less, and you pray a little bit more. Know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's in your heart. Wallahi, just a little bit of kibir, just a little arrogance, just looking down on people a little bit because you know more than them. Because you look better than them, because you have more money than them. That sin is a great sin in Islam. It's called kibir, arrogance, and it prevents people from Jannah. And if you have that in you, you have to turn to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't think that because you protected your limbs from zina, from adultery and fornication, have you protected your sight? Do you protect your tongue from speaking about other people in a manner that they wouldn't like? Yeah, I mean, each and every single human being on this planet is in need of Tawbah. And Allah Azza wa Jal loves for us to make Tawbah. And we should turn to Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala in Tawbah because He is at Tawbah. He guides to Tawbah and He accepts Tawbah. And we ask Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala to grant us sincere Tawbah. Alhamdulillah wa kafa wa salatu wa salam ala rasulihi al mustafa wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala ma ba'd. If you feel that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has opened up the door of Tawbah for you, like right now, you feel it inside, you know that there's something that you should be doing better, do not turn your back on that door. Seek Allah's forgiveness and turn to him in repentance. And those are two different things. A lot of times we confuse the concept of istilfar, seeking forgiveness, and tawbah, which we often translate as repentance. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he gives an example that helps to clarify the difference between istilfar and tawbah. And with this example, hopefully, it will help clarify the path for us. He says, Rahimahullah, that a person, imagine a person who has mounted their riding beast. Think about a car. And they are going down a path, but that path leads to destruction. There's two things that need to happen for that person that's on that path that is leading to destruction. The first, the first thing is that they need to get off of that path that leads to destruction. 
The second thing is they need to return to the path that leads to success and salvation. So those are two different actions. The first is to get away from the path that leads to destruction. And the second is to turn to the path of salvation and the path of success. Getting off of the wrong path, that's istighfar. That's seeking forgiveness. Getting away from that. Returning to the correct path that leads to success, this is tawbah. This is turning. And so tawbah happens after istighfar. Istighfar is only something in the past. Seeking forgiveness is for something that happened in the past. Tawbah is for the past, for the present, and for the future. Because in order for tawbah to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have to have remorse. That's for something that already happened. You have to cease and desist. That's right now. You can't do the sin and truly be repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's for the future because true repentance requires that inside of you, you are determined, you have that resolve not to turn back to the sin that you were committing. Now that being said, it is important for us to realize that even if you have the resolve not to turn back to that particular sin or to a way of sin or to an ideology that is sinful, it doesn't mean that you're always going to be successful. Do not let your fear of failure stop you from making Toba today. No more than the fact that you're going to eat later on today is going to stop you from brushing your teeth now. No more than the fact that you know you're going to get dirty tomorrow stops you from making a taking a shower today or changing your clothes. Yeah, you know you're going to get dirty again. We know we're going to sin again. Don't let that stop you from making Toba. Don't let that prevent you from turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahi, that is a diabolical trap from shaitan who wants us to get more distant and further and further away to the point that we are so far, we feel like there is no return. But know that Allah is a tawab. He says to the people who say that he, that Isa ibn Maryam is Allah, or that Allah is Thali through Thalatha, that he is one of three. Allah says to them, Were they not just turn to Allah and Tawbah and seek his forgiveness? If Allah is saying that to the greatest sin, which is a shirku billah, associating partners with him, if Allah is calling them very nicely, bilut. Will they not just repent? If Allah is calling them to Tawbah, then what is it that you have done that Allah cannot forgive? That at Tawbah will not accept your repentance? Is there anything? No, even the one who killed a hundred people, Allah accepted his repentance. Yes, if you do something wrong to somebody, then you need to make amends with them. That's part of your Tawbah. But know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just a little bit of his mercy, just a little bit of his pardoning is so much greater than all of our sins put together. So if you feel right now that Allah has opened up that door for you, then enter, turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Feel inside of yourself that, look, I'm not going to go back to that way of life. I'm not going to do that sin anymore. Oh, Allah, aid me in overcoming this bad habit that I have. Because believe me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants that from us. He has told us that in the Quran, and he is not like his creation, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He does not get tired of accepting our repentance. Brothers and sisters in Islam, a practical step forward. Take it step by step. Start with saying astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh. The Prophet والسلام, would say in a gathering, in one gathering, Rabbi wa tuba 
إنك أنت التواب الرحيم رب اغفر لي وتوب علي إنك أنت التواب الرحيم ابن عمر رضي الله تعالى عنهما who was a young companion he said I heard the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم saying this a hundred times in one gathering رب اغفر لي oh Allah forgive me وتوب علي and accept my repentance aid me in repenting turn to me وتوب علي إنك أنت التواب الرحيم you are at tawab and you are Ar-Rahim, you are the beneficent, the merciful, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet would say this a hundred times. Start there. If the Prophet said it in one gathering, can you not say that a hundred times in a day? Start there. Just get it on your tongue. Allow it to enter into your heart. And then examine yourself. Examine yourself. Look at that one thing that you know is one of those nagging sins that keeps coming back. Work on that. Have somebody help you if necessary for accountability. Start with those things that Allah has made an obligation upon you. Your five daily prayers. Are you building your day around the prayers? Are you not doing your prayers at all? Or are you squeezing your prayers into your day because that's a difference? There's a difference between building your day around Salat and squeezing Salat into your day. So turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Check your environment and check your friends. Because the situations that you put yourself in have a lot, they dictate, in fact, a lot of what you do. And who you surround yourself with is going to dictate a lot of what you do. And then look at what you consume. Again, brothers and sisters in Islam, this is step by step. Start with your tongue, just asking Allah to forgive you and to turn to you. Look at that one thing that's been a nagging sin. Get rid of it. Get it out your life. Even if it comes back, get it out your life today. Look at the obligations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put upon us and your relationship with those obligations. Look at your environment and your friends and beware of what you consume. And when I say what you consume, yes, we're talking about what you eat, what you drink, the substances you put in your body, because that affects your dua. And if you're not eating halal, you may be putting a barrier between you and your Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala, between you and, you and your dua. But also what you consume by way of knowledge. Information. Where are you getting your knowledge from? Your information. What else are you watching? The entertainment that you entertain yourself with. Look at those things because they affect your heart and they will affect your toba. Know that the path to toba. Know that that is your path to success. Allah Azza wa Jalla says in the Quran, and we'll end with this verse, وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا أَيُّهَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ And turn to your Lord, all of you, all of you believers, تُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ Turn to Him, repent to Him, reconcile your situation, make your values in harmony with the values of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tubu ilallahi jami'an ayyuhal mu'minu. O believers, for what purpose? La'allakum tuflihun. So that you will be successful. Without Tawbah, we will not be successful. You can read every success book that they have out there, every self-help book, seven habits of highly successful people and all of the other success stories that you want to read. Without Tawbah, we will not be successful. ربنا اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم اللهم أصلح لنا ديننا الذي هو عصمة أمننا وأصلح لنا دنيانا التي فيها معاشنا وأصلح لنا آخرتنا التي إليها معادنا واجعل الحياة زيادة لنا في كل خير والموت راحة لنا من كل شر ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار Welcome to Salah.